just before this last video in the video series, I wanted to share something with you. So this last job we're trying to do, copying and pasting the shapes across all the sheets is quite a tricky job. It's gonna involve a loop within a loop and some fairly intricate code. And when I film the video, you'll see I actually got into a bit of trouble uh, with the coding. So I was thinking, well, maybe I should just reshoot it. But then I thought, no, it's actually good from an educational perspective because you can see what programmers spend a lot of time doing, which is debugging, trying to understand why code isn't working and trying to fix it, trying to get it to work. And when we're doing that in Excel VBA, we're using uh, the debug uh, the debug function in the Visual Basic Editor, going through the codes, uh, lining uh, the Visual Basic Editor uh, with the spreadsheet, trying to understand how the two are interacting. And they are essential skills uh, for working with Visual Basic. So this video, certainly not the smoothest video I've ever done, and definitely click through it if you get a bit bogged down with it. But I think overall, it's a good illustration of how, how you can effectively work uh, with VBA how you can get things working. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So to complete the custom VBA-based navigation system, all we have to do is copy-paste the buttons we've created, which allow us to navigate around the file, copy-paste those buttons across the whole file so that the same buttons appear on each sheet and it's very easy to click around. That's gonna give us uh, the required effect. So let's get back uh, into the worksheet. I'm still on the sheet where I've created these shapes and these shapes are now ready to go, ready to be copy-pasted copy across the whole file. So we're not gonna do that uh, manually, although it will be perfectly you know, possible uh, to uh, select those copy-paste manually across all of the sheets, but that would be really difficult with 50, or at least frustrating, with 50 or, or, or more sheets. Um, so we're going to recycle some code. We're definitely gonna have to position the shapes. Um, so I'm gonna recycle the code we looked at in the first or second video uh, for moving and positioning the shapes. And let's rename this, so I've copy-pasted it, duplicated the routine. Let's rename this copy-paste across sheets, give it that meaningful name so we can understand uh, what it's supposed to do. Okay, we are gonna need uh, two loops for this because we're gonna want to loop through all of the shapes and then we're gonna loop through all of the sheets as well. And using two loops can be confusing, so it's certainly a case of breaking it down step by step, doing it in you know simple steps that allows you to work through the process. Um, so what's the first thing uh, we'd like to do? I'm just gonna make these lines of code annotations so that Excel uh, will ignore them. So let's just take um, a single sheet and let's try to copy paste all of the shapes onto that sheet. So let's take the dashboard sheet, let's try to copy paste all of the shapes onto that dashboard sheet. Now, as always, there's a few different possible approaches for this. We could group all the shapes together, copy paste them like that. Uh, we could use some code to select all of the shapes and those, those approaches would be, would be effective. There's always more than one approach, uh, but we're gonna continue with our approach of looping through all the shapes and then doing something to each of the shapes. And in this case, we want to copy paste each shape onto another sheet. So this basic structure um, should work well for us. Uh, this will loop through the shapes uh, in the sheets. So let's start with um, active sheet dot shapes. This is the line of code we've used multiple times to select shapes, uh, to loop through uh, shapes on the sheet. And let's copy the shape, that seems to make sense. So we'd want to copy the shape and then move to the sheet uh, where we want to paste the shape. And in this case, we want to use paste it to the first sheet, which is the dashboard sheet. I'm just gonna use the index number. It's a bit easier. Uh, so select the sheet and then the line of code to um, paste the sheet, active sheet dot paste. So they're the main elements of the code we're going to need. Of course, if you didn't know that, you know, absolutely fine. Just get the macro recorder going, do what you need to do. You'll be able to get the code that you need. But I think this is a pretty good start. 
Um, so let's just loop through this a few times and let's see what's happening. So F8 key on a PC to step into, or you can go debug at the top and step into. I'm just going to hit the F8 key. Okay, that seems to make sense. There's going to be a problem here though because um, the active sheet is now the dashboard sheet, as you can see, this is the dashboard sheet. So I'm going to improve this code uh, by, let's say, and the name of my sheet I've got in the back end that I'm using, storing the shapes on. Uh, this sheet, it's outside your screenshot, but this sheet is called shape store. So I'm just going to type the name in there. And that means that we don't actually have to select the sheet um, in order to do the copy paste. Um, with that line of code, the name of the sheet and the object on the sheet, that's going to allow us to copy it without having to select that sheet. So that's saving us some time. Nice, efficient way to do it. OK, let's keep rolling through this code. F8 key, just stepping through it. OK, and I can see, I'll just stop there. I can see the shapes appearing uh, on the first sheet. So it seems to be working, looping through the shapes, uh, just going through that loop. And then each time it goes through the loop, takes the next shape, because remember the value of the variable is increasing by one every time. So it's taking the next shape and copying it in. So that's, that's a good start, but clearly there's a few more things I need to do. Um, we need to think about positioning. And this is why I uh, copy paste the positioning code. I've got some lines of code here which are going to help us to position uh, the buttons where we want them to go on the sheet. Uh, but for now, I'm going to delete these ones. So just outside of your screenshot, I've gone to the Home tab, then all the way over on the right hand side, uh, Find Select and then Select Objects. So this allows me to quickly select the shapes, just delete them. And then you have to hit Escape, which takes you back to normal working in Excel uh, mode. So that's a nice way to quickly delete the shapes. OK, back to my back end sheet. This seems to be working pretty well, uh, but we want to position uh, the shape. So I'm going to reactivate this code, just delete the inverted commas there. This is the original code we used to position uh, the buttons on this sheet. So I'm hopeful that using the same code, we should be able to position the buttons uh, on the other sheets too. That's, that's what we're looking for. So anyway, these lines of code are now reactivated. So Excel will execute those lines of code. So let's just go through uh, using the F8 key, just rolling through again. OK, I can see what's happened there. I didn't actually stop the code before. Um, so it started from counter equals five which is, and we wanted it to start from the beginning. So I've just deleted that shape, hit the stop key to reset the code, and then F8. Okay. Okay, so we can see there we've started on the wrong, on the wrong sheet. Um, so, there we go. Let's reposition this, this, this chart. Okay, so I'm just fixing that. Um, and let's, let's delete this one again. Okay. Well, I'm not absolutely sure what happened there, so let's just roll through the code again, try to understand. So this line of code should be copying the shape, selecting the first sheet, pasting the shape in, so that's fine. Okay, I think I, think I understand what's going on here. Right, yes. So the active sheet is the first sheet, that's the dashboard sheet. And it's going to do something to the first shape in this sheet. Counter equals one. So the first shape in this sheet, it's going to move around. So if we continue this code, it would actually move around one of these charts, which is recognizing uh, as shapes. So it's not, it's not quite right. But I think if we substitute this for uh, selection, hoping this will work. And then let's just try that. Let's see. Let's see if that works. I'll delete. I'll delete this button here. Okay. Save the file. 
And let's just step into this, work through it. Okay, we've got our shape there. That seemed to be okay. And let's change this to selection as well. Okay, and again, yeah, that seems to be, seems to be okay. But the positioning at the moment is not quite uh, accurate. Let's just work through the code again, F8 key. Okay, so the top positioning seems to be okay, but the, uh, the horizontal positioning is not, is not quite right. So how might we, how might we um, fix that? Um, well, let's change this 28.5 figure. It seems that the shape's too far across. So let's try playing with this 28.5 figure. And let's change this to, let's try four. Let's see, see how that goes. Now I'm going to delete this shape again because uh, these columns are both two. But I think uh, that, that might be too little. So let's, yeah, so that, that's clearly too close. Okay, so I've got, I've got a better idea. Um, so Excel knows um, where the shapes are positioned. That's what we've been working with. Excel also knows uh, where the cells are positioned on the spreadsheet. The cells could be in different places according to the width of the columns and the height of the rows. And we can say to Excel, make the left property of the shape equal to the left property of this cell, cell C3. That's, that's, that's actually what we want. So let's give that a go. Okay, so there I'm saying, okay, what's happened here? Okay, I just missed out a speech mark there. There we go. So there I'm saying, yeah, make the left property equal to the left property of cell C3. So that's going to be our initial kind of move across the sheet. And then subsequent shapes will be impacted by this by this line of code, which should move the shapes across the spreadsheet. Okay, don't worry if it doesn't make sense yet. Should all come together now. Okay, so I'm stepping through. So the shapes there, top position's good. Okay, the left position's it's still not quite right. Let's, let's bring another shape in here. Okay. So the subsequent shapes are coming in quite nicely. It's just that initial uh, positioning that seems to be uh, problematic. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I've just changed changed this to counter to counter minus two. That might that might do the job. So I'm gonna clean these shapes out again. Find and select shape select objects which are just outside of your screenshot. So back into the code again. F8 step into. Okay, there's our shape. Okay, that, that, that looks about right now. Yeah, that's lined up really nicely. So we can see it was to do with the value of counter here. Okay, so for the first shape, this line of code here, I want to equal zero because I don't want it to move across the spreadsheet. The subsequent shapes I want to position further along. Yeah, but this line of code, um, for the first shape at least, I want it to equal zero. So counter equals two to begin with and um, counter minus two would equal zero. Um, it's gonna be better with counter equals one. I think, I think we should be there now. Let's delete that. Okay, and just work, work through the code again. Okay, we've now got the dashboard button coming in. Okay, there's Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay, let's work through the whole thing. I need my job. Job satisfaction now. Just position the VBA editor there. Okay, this looks good. Coming in nicely. And then finally, Q11. Okay, we're back to D. Okay, that's interesting. So it seems to have gone back to the beginning of the code. Or how many, how many Qs? Actually, we only have 10 Qs. So that's fine. I can just delete this shape. Okay. Yeah, that seems to be working working well. Good. So that's the first step and you could see that I had to make lots of tweaks to the code uh, to get it working but that's an essential skill for a coder 
to be able to understand what's going on, why is it going wrong, and then to be able to just make those tweaks. I re very rarely write a routine where it all works straight away. I write it and then try to understand where the errors are and then tweak it and get it working, get it to a good level of robustness. Good. So now we're in a situation where we've got this loop and this loop is taking each shape and copy pasting it to another sheet. And, but that's only happening for the first sheet. And in fact, we want it to copy paste across the whole workbook so that we have these shapes appearing on each sheet. Okay, so how might we do that? Maybe stop the video, think about what construct is gonna help us to do that. Well, we've already got one loop. We're looping through all the shapes. We're gonna need another loop because we wanna loop through all the shapes, but also loop through uh, all of the sheets. So we're gonna need a loop within a loop. Um, so let's declare, we need another loop. That means another variable. Let's call it sheet counter. And then a for next loop should do the job. For sheet counter equals, we have 11 sheets. That's one dashboard sheet and 10 Q sheets. And then next sheet counter at the bottom, just outside of your screenshot now, but I'll move this up. There we go. Okay, so now we have a sheet, uh, a loop, a loop within a loop is what's going on now. Uh, but we don't need this for the first sheet because the dashboard sheet, we've already got the buttons on there. So we just change that to two. Okay, so it should go to the sheet and then um, copy paste the buttons to that sheet. It's gonna require a couple more tweaks though. So we don't want to select sheet one every time. We want to go through the sheets. Okay, so we can use the, uh, the variable we've just created, the sheet counter variable, which will increase by one every time we go through uh, this loop. So that looks good. That's gonna loop through the sheets. Okay. This looks, um, looks fairly good to me. Um, but what we're gonna have to do is uh, just give it a go really. And obviously we're making changes across sheets now. So what I do in this situation, um, save the file and uh, you can then, you know, you're backing it up and then you can then come back to it if you need to. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this code. Let's see what happens. Right, okay, this looks good. So I'm on the 10th sheet now. And this looks good. Okay. Okay, good. So I can click the buttons, go on back to the dashboard sheet there, to the Q1 sheet, that's working fine. The Q3 sheet, Q4 sheet, okay. Yeah, this seems to be working fine, all the way up to Q10. So that's a very nice uh, dynamic navigation. The only thing that's annoying me here is that some of these sheets have this button selected. And something like that would really annoy me if I was handing it over to a customer. Um, to have something selected when you open up a sheet, you know, it kind of draws your attention to it, can be a distraction. So let's loop through all the sheets and select uh, A1, just to make sure um, that that's not, that's not a problem. Um, a good line of code to add here to ensure that we exit uh, cut copy modes would be this line here, application.cutcopy mode equals false. So that means we're exiting cut, cut copy mode. So when you see a fuzzy line around something because you've cut it or copied it, uh, that exits, exits this, uh, that mode. So this is a good line uh, to remember to put in. Yeah, but I want to loop through all the sheets and select A1. Just, just to tidy up, just so none of the buttons um, are selected. So let's do that quickly. Select A1 and um, declare integer variable. Okay, and then um, Yeah, four counter equals one to 11, because we've got 11 sheets. And select the sheet. And select the sheet. And then select um, A1. Okay, that looks fine. 
There we go. Okay, let's just run that. Seems to have worked fine. So go back to the spreadsheet now. Okay, we can see that none of those buttons are selected, which would be an annoying, could be an annoying uh, distraction. Good. Okay, so the custom navigation system seems to be working well. I'm just going to road test it a bit. But this looks great. And we can see because of the consistency of formatting, because on each sheet uh, the column widths are the same and the row heights are the same, it doesn't feel like you're changing sheets. That's exactly the effect we're looking for with a custom navigation system. And that's why it can be such, such a value add for clients. It shouldn't be the first thing you build into your spreadsheet, but if the, the functions of the spreadsheet are working well, it's doing what it needs to do. It can be a real, really good way to kind of finish off the spreadsheet and to get that wow factor to get the client thinking uh, this spreadsheet looks great. Anyway, custom navigation, um, custom navigation system seems to be working well. So let, let's just try to review the whole series go through the techniques we've done. Uh, well, the first video, uh, we began by creating a shape and formatting it, and then using code to create 10 shapes. So you, you could do that manually, copy, paste, but you can use a loop um, to loop through the shapes and create multiple shapes. And then we looked at positioning the shapes, and we learned about the top and the left, um, the top and the left properties of the shape, how we can manipulate those to position the shapes. Um, and then we looked at the code we would need to make the navigation work and we had a really nice little routine uh, which is just here, the dynamic navi and that allows us to select, uh, that will select the correct sheet according to which button is clicked so we've got a single line of code connected to all the buttons, triggered by all the buttons goes to the same routine, gets us to the right sheet really efficient, really nice and then finally, the buttons were ready, so we looked at copying them, copy and pasting them across the whole file. And we needed some fairly intricate code to do that. It took me a while. You saw how long it took me to work it out, but that's normal for me. I'm very used to working through and like tweaking code. I don't expect it to go right first time. But we um, worked with a loop within a loop. One loop, looping through the, sh the shapes on the back end sheet and copying them across. And then another loop on the outside, looping through each sheet in the spreadsheet. So here we've got a loop within a loop, really powerful uh, programming uh, idea uh, that should help you speed up your work. Okay, so that's our um, custom-based navigation system. Um, I really hope you can get it to work for yourself. As I said, um, it shouldn't be the main thing you have in a spreadsheet, but uh, it looks great. If you get it, if the spreadsheet's working anyway, you add it to a spreadsheet, it's going to look good. Uh, my experience, customers uh, really love it. But more importantly, through creating it, you can learn so many useful coding techniques. Working with shapes, looping through shapes, uh, the dynamic uh, Navi routine that we had, uh, and then a loop within a loop uh, at the end. Save yourself a huge uh, amount of work and get this really, really good looking um, navigation uh, for your spreadsheet. Okay, that's the end of this video series. Hope it's helpful for you and I hope to see you in another video on the channel.